Hello, welcome back, and this is day number 362. Today we read Zechariah 14, our first reading in Isaiah 65 and Revelation 19. Unfortunately, we have not yet seen this fulfilled from the end of Zechariah 12. Then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the family of David and on the people of Jerusalem. They will look on me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grieve bitterly for him as for a firstborn son who has died. If this is about the Jewish people mourning for him who they pierced, It does not seem that that has been fulfilled yet. This part has been fulfilled from the beginning of chapter 13. On that day, a fountain will be opened for the dynasty of David and for the people of Jerusalem, a fountain to cleanse them from all their sins and impurity. This, from Zechariah 13, was referred to by the Lord Jesus in Mark 14.27, in or on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, the man who is my partner, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Strike down the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn against the lambs. Zechariah 14 Watch! For the day of the Lord is coming when your possessions will be plundered right in front of you. I will gather all the nations to fight against Jerusalem. The city will be taken, the houses looted, and the women raped. Half the population will be taken into captivity, and the rest will be left among the ruins of the city. Then the Lord will go out to fight against those nations as he fought in times past. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will split apart, making a wide valley running from east to west. Half of the mountain will move toward the north and half toward the south. You will flee through this valley, for it will reach across to Azal. Yes, you will flee as you did from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come, and all his holy ones with him. On that day the sources of light will no longer shine, yet there will be continuous day. Only the Lord knows how this could happen. There will be no normal day and night, for at evening time it will still be light. On that day, life-giving waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half toward the Dead Sea and half toward the Mediterranean, flowing continuously in both summer and winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day, there will be one Lord. His name alone will be worshipped. And all the land from Geba, north of Judah, to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, will become one vast plain. But Jerusalem will be raised up in its original place and will be inhabited all the way from the Benjamin Gate over to the site of the Old Gate, then to the Corner Gate, and from the Tower of Hananel to the King's Winepress. And Jerusalem will be filled, safe at last, never again to be cursed and destroyed. And the Lord will send a plague on all the nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their people will become like walking corpses, their flesh rotting away. Their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. On that day they will be terrified, stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will fight their neighbors hand to hand. Judah, too, will be fighting at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the neighboring nations will be captured, great quantities of gold and silver and fine clothing. This same plague will strike the horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all the other animals in the enemy camps. In the end, the enemies of Jerusalem who survive the plague will go up to Jerusalem each year to worship the king, the lord of heaven's armies, and to celebrate the festival of shelters. 
any nation in the world that refuses to come to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of heaven's armies, will have no rain. If the people of Egypt refuse to attend the festival, the Lord will punish them with the same plague that he sends on the other nations who refuse to go. Egypt and the other nations will all be punished if they don't go to celebrate the festival of shelters. On that day, even the harness bells of the horses will be inscribed with these words, Holy to the Lord. And the cooking pots in the temple of the Lord will be as sacred as the basins used beside the altar. In fact, every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord of heaven's armies. All who come to worship will be free to use any of these pots to boil their sacrifices. And on that day, there will no longer be traitors in the temple of the Lord of heaven's armies. We turn to Isaiah 65. In chapter 64, there was a mixture of hope, regretful repentance, and supplication, including these verses. For since the world began, no ear has heard, and no eye has seen a God like you, who works for those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways. But you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Isaiah 65 The Lord says, I was ready to respond, but no one asked for help. I was ready to be found, but no one was looking for me. I said, Here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. All day long I opened my arms to a rebellious people, but they follow their own evil paths and their own crooked schemes. All day long they insult me to my face by worshiping idols in their sacred gardens. They burn incense on pagan altars. All night they go out among the graves, worshiping the dead. They eat the flesh of pigs and make stews with other forbidden foods. Yet they say to each other, Don't come too close or you will defile me. I am holier than you. These people are a stench in my nostrils, an acrid smell that never goes away. Look, my decree is written out in front of me. I will not stand silent. I will repay them in full. Yes, I will repay them, both for their own sins and for those of their ancestors, says the Lord. For they also burned incense on the mountains and insulted me on the hills. I will pay them back in full. But I will not destroy them all, says the Lord. For just as good grapes are found among a cluster of bad ones, and someone will say, Don't throw them all away. Some of those grapes are good. So I will not destroy all Israel, for I still have true servants there. I will preserve a remnant of the people of Israel and of Judah to possess my land. Those I choose will inherit it, and my servants will live there. The plain of Sharon will again be filled with flocks for my people who have searched for me, and the valley of Akor will be a place to pasture herds. But because the rest of you have forsaken the Lord and have forgotten his temple, and because you have prepared feasts to honor the God of fate and have offered mixed wine to the God of destiny, now I will destine you for the sword. All of you will bow down before the executioner. For when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen. You deliberately sinned before my very eyes and chose to do what you know I despise. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, My servants will eat, but you will starve. 
My servants will drink, but you will be thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be sad and ashamed. My servants will sing for joy, but you will cry in sorrow and despair. Your name will be a curse word among my people, for the sovereign Lord will destroy you and will call his true servants by another name. All who invoke a blessing or take an oath will do so by the God of truth, for I will put aside my anger and forget the evil of earlier days. Look, I am creating new heavens and a new earth, and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. Be glad, rejoice forever in my creation, and look, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness. Her people will be a source of joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and delight in my people, and the sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. No longer will babies die when only a few days old. No longer will adults die before they have lived a full life. No longer will people be considered old at 100. Only the cursed will die that young. In those days, people will live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of their own vineyards. Unlike the past, invaders will not take their houses and confiscate their vineyards. For my people will live as long as trees, and my chosen ones will have time to enjoy their hard-won gains. They will not work in vain, and their children will not be doomed to misfortune. For they are people blessed by the Lord, and their children, too, will be blessed. I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion will eat hay like a cow, but the snakes will eat dust. In those days, no one will be hurt or destroyed on my holy mountain. I, the Lord, have spoken. We turn now to Revelation 19. In Revelation 18, we heard the chapter of doom against the city of Babylon, or Rome, or this world's evil system. If this sounded familiar, it is because you were remembering Ezekiel 27. Revelation 19 After this, I heard what sounded like a vast crowd in heaven shouting, Praise the Lord! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. His judgments are true and just. He has punished the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality. He has avenged the murder of his servants. And again their voices rang out. Praise the Lord! The smoke from that city ascends forever and ever. Then the twenty-four elders and the four living beings fell down and worshipped God, who was sitting on the throne. They cried out, Amen! Praise the Lord! And from the throne there came a voice that said, Praise our God, all his servants, all who fear him, from the least to the greatest. Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd, or the roar of mighty ocean waves, or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice. Let us give honor to Him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and His bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear, for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words that come from God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said, No, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers and sisters who testify about their faith in Jesus. Worship only God. 
for the essence of prophecy is to give a clear witness for Jesus. Then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, like juice flowing from a winepress. On his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, shouting to the vultures flying high in the sky, Come, gather together for the great banquet God has prepared. Come and eat the flesh of kings, generals, and strong warriors, of horses and their riders, and of all humanity, both free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast." miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding on the white horse. And vultures all gorged themselves on the dead bodies. Let's pray together. O God, our Father, you are the Lord of heaven's armies, and our Lord Christ Jesus, you are the victorious King, the Word of God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who will come riding victorious on that white charger. Zechariah 14 says, On that day the source of light will no longer shine, yet there will be continuous day. And on that day life-giving waters will flow out from Jerusalem. Lord, we thank you for the light and the life-giving waters. We thank you for your victory. The angel said to John, Blessed are those invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Yes, Lord, thank you that we will be there. We praise you, Lord, for inviting us and giving your word to lead us so that we will be there. Just like Isaiah said, O Lord, We are such hopeless sinners. Without you, Lord Jesus, shedding your blood to cleanse us from our sins, there is no way that we could have white robes. We thank you, Lord, for the heavenly clothing that you will give to us. And we also pray, Lord, that you would help us to do the righteous deeds that you have prepared for us to do. O Lord, we are glad and rejoice, and we give honor to you. And may you be feared and reverenced all over the world. We thank you for the promise written also by John that says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just, you fulfill your promises, you will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, we pray that you would forgive our sins, that you would cleanse us 
as we confess our sins to you now.